Welcome to Choice Classic Radio. With 463 episodes made, The Whistler originally aired on the CBS Radio Network from 1942 to 1955. As usual, we remind you to like and follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and keep the golden age of radio alive by donating at choiceclassicradio.com to our Patreon page. Give that donate button a click. And now, The Whistler. Wait a minute. Have you heard the weird tales of The Whistler? I'm The Whistler. There's something wrong. Terribly wrong. I'm going to wait a few more days, and when I'm sure, I'm going to take care of you, Joe. Well, what do you mean? I'm going to kill you. Sunday night, and again CBS presents The Whistler. I, The Whistler, know many things, for I walk by night. I know many strange tales, many secrets hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. I know the nameless terrors of which they dare not speak. And so tonight I tell you the bewildering story of Mirage. Fred Adams is an attorney, a promising young attorney. Fred is a specialist, for his practice has been limited to nightclubs and bars. In other words, Fred is what is called a mouthpiece. He steps gaily down the street tonight, unaware of the two men leaning against the black sedan parked in the shadows between the lampposts. Hi, Fred. What's your hurry? Huh? Oh, hello, Joe. What are you and Mike doing in this end of town? We're waiting for you, Fred. Thought you might like to take a little ride. Ride? Yeah, the boss wants to have a little talk with you, Fred. Well, not tonight. I'm busy. Got an appointment. The boss would like to talk with you, Fred. Get in. I told you I'm busy. I'll drop around tomorrow. What are you so busy about, Fred? <laughs> How'd you like a poke in the nose? Uh, Get in the car, Fred. Let go of me, your hood. We ain't kidding. Get in. What'd you two guys do without a gun? Get in. Okay, okay. <laughs> Fifteen minutes later, Fred makes his way through the crowded tables of the swank Tripoli Cafe toward a door marked manager. He hesitates a moment, glances at the two men beside him, and knocks. Across the room, a beautiful woman sits behind the desk, toying with a long cigarette holder. Come in, Freddy. Come in. Well, we got him, boss. And uh, where do you think he was? <laughs> Over on Park Avenue. <laughs> How fancy. Wait outside, Joe. I want to talk to Freddy. Alone. <laughs> yeah. Sit down, Fred. Well, what's wrong? You in trouble again, Gloria? Would it matter to you if I were in trouble? Of course it would. Where have you been the past week? Has it been a week since I saw you last? You know it has. And a week is too long to suit me, Freddy. Well, you know my phone number. If anything had happened, you'd have found me. Doesn't make me very happy to think I have to go out looking for you. Kind of lets me down. Oh, for the love of Pete, what happened? Nothing's happened here at the cafe. Well, what's the matter, then? It's you, Fred. It's what you've done. I haven't done anything. Why do you think I paid your way through law school? Well, because you wanted to. <laughs> and because you needed a lawyer around. Is that all? I don't know. I thought we were together in this thing for keeps. Well, yeah. I'm still your attorney... What else do you expect of me? You have the nerve to sit there and say that. You know how I feel about you. You've always known. We've always been pals, good friends. Pals? Friends? Oh, Freddy. Now, what are you trying to say? I knew for the past three weeks that you had changed. Couldn't figure it out. But I found out this afternoon. Here it is in the paper. District Attorney's daughter to wed young lawyer. 
Well, what about it? Are you really in love with her, Fred? Certainly. Why shouldn't I be? I don't think you are. I knew you were campaigning for the DA in this last election. I know you're ambitious. I think you've got your eyes on a job in the DA's office, more than you have on the girl. I tell you, I love Brenda Gibson, and you can think whatever you like. Is uh, she pretty? Very pretty. Young. I don't like the way you said that, Fred. I'm not so old. I didn't mean it that way. You're a very beautiful woman, Gloria. Am I? But, well, I don't know what it is. You've done everything in the world for me. No one could ask for more. And I've always cared more for you than any woman I've ever known. Until now. But there's something about Brenda. That, well, she's so different. Go on. I hate to say this to you, but I've got to make you understand. Brenda's intelligent. She comes from a fine family. She has... Well, she has culture. And I came up from the chorus. Now, Gloria, I didn't expect you to take it this way. Well, how did you expect me to take it? I didn't think you were really in love with me. It never occurred to me that you had any ideas about... about marriage. What do you think I am, a totem pole? I looked at our association more as... well, as a business arrangement. You financed me through school, and when I got up in the money, I'd... I'd pay you back. Oh, Fred, I... Don't say any more. I know I've been blunt... But how else can I tell you? What else can I say? There's nothing you can say. But I'll tell you something. You're getting out of your element. You don't belong there. You belong here with me. And if you marry her, you'll live to regret the day you met her. Now, look. Don't be like that. Don't be a hard loser. You'd be better off dead. You don't mean that, Gloria? No. No, Fred, I, I didn't mean that. Oh, darling, please go. Before I say any more, I... I know I haven't a chance, but I... Please go. I'm sorry, Gloria. Terribly sorry. Bye, Fred. I'll be seeing you. Goodbye, Gloria. <laughs> later, the papers are filled with stories and pictures of Fred and Brenda and the district attorney, and parties and dinners and teas. Read them, Gloria. Pour over them. Mr. and Mrs. Frederick Adams this, and Mr. and Mrs. Frederick Adams that. Read them, Gloria. Read them and weep. But meanwhile, on a train to Miami... And Fred, darling, after we spend a few days in Miami, we can fly over to Nassau. Father has a place there, and I know some wonderful people. We can have a great time. Fred? Hmm? Oh, what did you say? <laughs> Snap out of it, darling. We're on our honeymoon. <laughs> yes, Brenda, I'm sorry. I know we're going to have a swell time. My sister Nella's spending the summer at Nassau. Why didn't Nella come home for the wedding? She was to be your bridesmaid. I told you, dear, you can't always get transportation just when you want it these days. After all, Nella's your only sister. She could have made an extra effort, hmm? What are you thinking about? Oh, business. Business? <laughs> what business? I was thinking about my new job. Uh, how did your father have to make a place for me in the DA's office? Mm, I suppose he thinks you're a capable young attorney. Did, uh, did you ask him to appoint me? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I may have had something to do with it. Uh, oh, I wanted you to start out right. You don't mind, do you? Certainly not. It was swell of you. I only hope I can make good. You will. And who knows, maybe you'll be the district attorney yourself someday. I hope so. At least I'll break my neck trying. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's forget about everything for the next two weeks, but I... I love you so very much, Brenda. Darling, I'll spend all my waking moments trying to make you happy. Thanks, dear. You'll never regret the day you met me. What did you say? You said you'd never regret the day you met me. Oh. I should say I won't. Not a chance in a million. Now the happy honeymoon is over, and Fred and Brenda are back home. Fred is in the district attorney's office and progressing nicely. But Gloria, poor Gloria, still sits in her office at the Tripoli and broods over her fate. She scans every item in the society columns, searching for news about Fred and Brenda. And every item, every picture nurtures her resentment. 
and her resentment slowly turns to hate, and finally something snaps in her mind, and she begins to harbor thoughts of revenge. <laughs> yes, <laughs> revenge. Joe! Joe! Yeah? What are you yelling about, Gloria? I wasn't yelling. Close the door. Well, it sure sounded like yelling to me. I said I wasn't yelling. Okay, okay, I apologize. No, sit down. Oh, look, Gloria, what's eating you? Why don't you get out of this office? Go out and visit with the customers the way you used to. Why should I? Well, they all miss you. They're all asking, where's Gloria? I run out of excuses. I didn't call you in here to talk about the business. Well, maybe not, but I thought it was time I said something. Here's the evening paper. I uh, didn't get it. Why not? Oh, look, Gloria, snap out of it, will you? Why don't you quit hunting for news about Fred? You're only driving yourself nutty. Fred was a nice guy, but he's gone. He's married. Forget him. I can't. Well, you could try... Not as easy as that. After all, he ain't the only man walking around. There's one or two others, you know. Yeah? Well, <clears throat> there's one guy in particular who might get your mind off Fred, uh, if you'd give him a chance. Yeah? Who? Well, uh, oh, I know I'm not as good looking as Fred, and I ain't got his fancy manners. But I like you just as much as he did, and probably a lot more. Sorry, Joe. At least I wouldn't walk out on you for any other dame. If you did, I wouldn't blame you. No? No. I'd blame the other woman. She had no right to take him away from me. He belonged to me. Oh, Gloria, please, please forget it. No, I won't. I can't. I've made up my mind. Huh? What are you thinking? Where's your car? Outside. Where's your gun? In my pocket. Some people are giving a party at their country place tonight for Fred and his wife. But, Gloria... But Fred was called out of town on business. They're giving the party anyway. And she'll be there. Friends will be there. So what? We'll wait for her. And follow her when she leaves. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Nothing doing. I ain't bumping off no woman. Sit down and shut up. You're crazy. You're going absolutely nutty. I'm getting out of here. You're driving me to that house. I won't. No? I wonder if the police will be interested in knowing who killed Lefty Hammond. Gloria, you, you wouldn't. <laughs> wouldn't I? Well... Okay, okay, you win. Better. Go get in your car. I'll go out the back way and meet you in the alley. Gloria and Joe sit in the car in the deep shadows of a spreading tree. The hours drag on, and then about 1.30 in the morning, the party breaks up and the cars begin to leave. Finally, Brenda comes through the gate, driving her own coupe. There she is. That's Brenda. Get going, Joe. Is she alone? Yes, she's alone. I sure wish you'd change your mind. Don't get too close to her. No, I ain't got nothing against her or Fred either. What good's this gonna do you? You wouldn't understand. I think you've gone off your beam. Maybe you're cracked. Shut up. I'm not crazy if that's what you mean. That's what I mean. Drop back a little. They say crazy people never think they're baddie. You might feel different about this in the morning, Gloria. Maybe you ought to see a doctor. Oh. Cut it out. Cut it out. Where do you get off slapping people? Move along. You're losing her. Well, lay off that rough stuff. Or I might decide to change my mind about the whole thing. Ah, you won't change your mind. It'd be funny if something happened to you. If anything happens to me, there's a letter in my safe that tells all about you. So you better see that I get back to the Tripoli. Okay, okay. I was only kidding. Yeah. We're coming along to that long stretch now. No cars behind us and none coming. Step on it now. Run her off the road. Now, run her off in that ditch. Say, what's the idea? Are you trying to wreck me? Get out of that car. What is this, a holder? Get out and shut up. I haven't anything but a couple of rings. Take a rings, Joe. Well, this is a new one, a woman bandit. Any money in your purse? A few dollars. Take the money and scatter the rest of the things around. Yeah, yeah. Now, ruffle up a hair, Joe. Muss her up. You take your hands off me. Oh, have a heart, Gloria. Okay, okay, I muss her up, but good. Look, are you? Stick your hands. What's the meaning of this? You've got what you want. Why don't you let me alone? I'll let you alone, Mrs. Adams. Who are you? Start walking. What? Start walking off through those trees. I won't. Oh, stop, stop Get it. moving. What are you going to do? See to it that you don't do any more chiseling in, Mrs. Fred Adams. Huh. I don't know what you're talking about. What? Let her have it, Joe. Now, what are you stolen for? You missed her. Give me that gun. Well, and 
that's the last of Mrs. Adams. She's... She's dead. Yeah. There's a gun. Now, let's get out of here. Oh. Well, what's the matter? What are you waiting for? I... I'm kind of dizzy. Kind of sick. I can't drive, Gloria. You better drive. <laughs> and I thought you were experienced at this business. If I hadn't seen you do it, Gloria, nobody in the world could have made me believe it. Nobody. Anything about it in this morning's paper, Joe? No. No, not a thing about it. And it was the night before last, too. I, I can't understand it. Are you... Are you sure she was dead? Of course I'm sure. Well, what do you suppose could have happened? She couldn't have walked away. Say, maybe they haven't found her or the, or the car yet, huh? Uh, it's impossible. At the main highway, hundreds of cars passed there in the course of a few hours. Well, maybe they've seen the car but just thought it was a wreck. Yeah, yeah, maybe that's what it is. Hey, you better lay off that stuff, Joe. You've been drinking for two days now. Yeah, but I need it. I'm jittery. I got the willies like I never had before. Say, maybe I ought to drive by that place and see if the car's gone, Okay, huh? okay. Get back as soon as possible. Yeah, 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 sure. I can't get it off my mind. I, I don't mind telling you. I, I'm scared. Go on, go on. And quit talking so much. Gloria. Gloria, I went out there. Yeah, well, I know, I know. What did you see? Nothing. Nothing. The car was gone. I looked all around for the spot. There wasn't a sign of anything. No trickets, no blood marks, no nothing. Well, then, then he must have found her. <laughs> but why don't they say something in the papers about it? If they just said something, I, I could stand it. It's driving me nuts. Are you going to lay off that stuff? No, no, I ain't. I, I need it. I don't need it. Yeah? I don't know what you're made of, but whatever it is, it's sure tough. I never knew a woman could be as tough. I'll never forget it as long as I live. Ah, you're a jellyfish. I can understand one guy rubbing out another one for doing something against the gang, but... I never thought I'd see a woman do a thing like that. And for no good reason. There was a reason. And shut up. I couldn't have done a thing like that. You could have turned me in first. There she was. Me in there, covered with... Shut up! It's funny, this stuff. It don't seem to have any effect on me. It's just like some water. Get hold of yourself. Poor kid. <laughs> I never felt so miserable in all my life. Did you get the late papers? Yeah. Yeah. Well, anything in it? No. No. Not a word. Hey, maybe. Maybe we didn't do it, Gloria. Maybe it was just a nightmare. No, we did it all right. And proper. If I don't hear something soon, I'll go crazy. Hey. Wait a minute. Huh? What is, what is it? Did they find her? No. Well, what do you know about that? Well, what is it? What is it? Look at this picture. Holy smoke. It's her. It's her, her and Fred. Mr. and Mrs. Fred Adams attend the races. When? When? Yesterday. It isn't possible. But it's her. I know it's her, Gloria. How could she? She's dead. Hey. Hey. What's the matter? Maybe. Maybe it's her. Her ghost? Don't be silly. I'm getting out of here. I'm leaving town. Look. You're in the other paper. Huh? The day before yesterday. Fred Adams and wife attend tennis match. And another picture. What could this mean? What did they say something about it? You see? You see, Gloria, it's getting you down, too. Oh, please, please, Gloria, let's pull out. It's not canny. I can't believe it. If it's in the papers, you've got to believe it. Did you double-cross me, Joe? Oh, what do you mean? Did you have blanks in that gun? Blanks? I'd certainly hate to get hit with what I had in that gun. She's dead, I tell you. Well, she better be. What do we do? We'll wait. That's all. Just wait. Okay. But I don't think I can stand it, Gloria. I'm going to pieces. <laughs> But they did wait. They waited for two more days, and Joe, fortified with his bottle, was able to hang on. <laughs> then Gloria began to crack under the strain of waiting. Joe, I, I can't stand it any longer. I gotta do it. Do what? I'm gonna call Fred's apartment to see if she's there. I wouldn't. Hello? Is this the Adams apartment? Is Mrs. Adams there? Uh, an old friend from out of town. 
Yeah. Thank you. She's there. Holy gee. She she answered. I heard her. You lied to me, Joe. I didn't lie. I didn't. I had bullets in that gun. I saw her and she was dead. There's something wrong. Terribly wrong. I'm going to wait a few more days. I'll check again. And when I'm sure, I'm going to take care of you, Joe. What do you mean? I'm going to kill you. That's crazy. I don't think it would be safe to have you walking around and talking. Gloria, listen, listen. Come on, we're going to my apartment and wait. The story's bound to break sooner or later. I'd rather get out of town. You're coming with me to my apartment. Get moving. Then three more days of sleepless waiting. The tenseness grows and grows. The suspense is almost stifling. Poor Joe can neither sleep nor eat. And Gloria becomes pale and drawn. Then Joe finally emerges and goes on a little scouting tour about town to see what he can learn. Then on the next night, a knock at Gloria's apartment door. Who? Who is it? It's me, Fred. Fred? Wait a minute. Hello, Gloria. What do you want, Fred? May I come in? I'd like to talk to you. Yeah, of course. Come in. Rather late, but, well, I had to talk to you. What about? <laughs> I never expected to see you around here again. Well, I was lonely. I had to talk to someone. Lonely? Well, sit down, Fred. Thanks. You look kind of tired, Gloria. What's wrong? Well, since you mentioned it, you, you look a bit weary yourself. What's wrong with you? Oh, nothing much. I sent you a check clearing up what I owed you. Did you get it? Yeah. There's something wrong, Fred. What is it? Your whole little trouble, that's all. Sort of trouble. Domestic? Domestic? What do you mean? But that isn't... It isn't possible? Is that what you're going to say? What? Yes, I... I thought you were quite happy with your wife. Well, things can develop suddenly... I certainly found that out. Well, what happened? Or do you want to tell me? Yes, yes. As a matter of fact, I do. I guess that's why I came here. You're always so darn understanding. You always knew the answers to things. But what happened? Well, I guess I really didn't belong in the upper crust. You had it figured out about right. Everything was all right until Brenda started to shape my career. Shape your career? Yes. She had everything all planned out for me. She and her father had it all figured out. I wanted to go into the DA's office and move up on my own initiative. They didn't want it that way. They wanted me to start out as a big shot. Did she leave you? Well, yes, yes. We just agreed to disagree. Oh. Well, where is she now? Her father's place, I suppose. When, when did she leave? Yesterday. Yesterday. Are you sure it was yesterday? Of course. Why do you ask that? Well, no reason, I suppose. I, I just can't believe it. it. Seems a shame. Well, I'm very sorry for you, Fred. Believe me. I know how you feel. I was let down with a dull thud once. Were you? You should know. Oh, Gloria, I was such a fool. You were right. I should have listened to you. You could see what was coming, and I was too dumb to realize it. Have you forgiven me? Yeah. Yeah, Fred. I'd have to forgive you. I love you so much. I've never been able to forget you for one single moment. I'm sorry, Gloria. Terribly sorry. Fred, I... I've got a strange feeling. I don't know what it is, but... I've got a feeling you're not telling me the truth. What? You mean you don't believe me? There is something you haven't told me. What is it? Why, why, nothing I've told you everything. I don't believe you, Fred. All right. Gloria, I, I'm... Well, I'm in a tough spot. Brenda hasn't gone away. She, She's dead. Dead? What on earth do you mean? Yeah, she was found dead beside a car a number of days ago. The day after we had a nasty argument, but I didn't do it. There have been many threats against the district attorney and member of his family. It, it may have been any one of a number of persons. Nothing's been said about it in the paper. I know that. I know it. They purposely kept it quiet. 
hoping the real killer would show his hand. That's silly. Why should he? I don't know. Oh, darling, it's all a mess. I'm completely worn out over it. I know they suspect me. I don't know what to do about it. Gloria! Gloria! I seen her. I seen her. Who? She was standing under the lamppost at the corner. She spoke to me. She said, Hello, Joe. How's Glory? Shut up, you're drunk. No, 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 it was her. It was Brenda. I ran for the elevator, and as the doors closed, she was coming into the lobby. She was terrible. Oh, pale and awful looking. You're simple, and you got the snakes. No, no, it was her. And she's coming up here. It's her. It's her. I, I do want to see her. I can't look at her. I, I can't stand it. Joe, turn on the lights. I won't, I won't. Turn on those lights. Never mind the lights. I can see you. All three of you. Brenda. What do you want? So you, Gloria. Yes. Yes, I met you for the first time not many nights ago. On a deserted highway. Joe, it is her. <laughs> Come out of the corner, Joe. I can see you. <laughs> Joe, the man who pulled the trigger. I didn't. I didn't. What do you want? So, Fred, you were in on the plan, too. You wanted me out of the way because of Gloria. You were back of the whole thing. No, Brenda, no, no. I had nothing to do with it. You decided you'd made a mistake, that you wanted Gloria. I didn't. I swear I didn't. Tell him, Joe. Tell him how you shot me down. You had the gun. Tell him or I'll... No, no, no. Get away from me. Don't touch me. I'll tell. I'll tell. I didn't do it. I didn't do it. She did it. Gloria did it. I couldn't. I didn't have the nerve. He's lying. I didn't do it. Go ahead, Joe. Spill it. I ain't going to take the rap for this. Gloria went off her beam when you married Brenda. She went crazy with jealousy. She knew about that party. And she made me drive her out there. We followed Brenda and then ran her off the road. She tried to make me do it, but I I couldn't. I fired wild and Gloria grabbed the gun from me and, and let her have it. She's lying. How could she make you do it? She threatened me. She's got something Shut on up, me. shut up! I don't care. She can tell what she knows about me, but I can prove that she killed Brenda. How can you prove it, Joe? I wore gloves. And I still have the gun and the only fingerprints on her. The glorious... You dirty little... I figured she might try to double-cross me. What about it, Gloria? All right. All right, I did it. I did it. I shot her. I couldn't stand it any longer. Turn on the lights, Joe. Hey, she ain't dead. It's her. It's her. Brenda ain't dead. Good Lord. Oh, yes. Brenda's dead, all right. Quite dead. And what is she? You'll find out, Gloria. What a strange quirk of fate. It was your money that caused all this. It was you who put me through law school so that I could defend you. But now, I'm sorry to say I'll be forced to be your prosecutor. Sorry, Gloria. Terribly sorry. <laughs> well, Gloria, you've come to the end of your rope. Things didn't work out as you planned. You really killed Brenda that night. But Fred got a brilliant idea. He had Nella, Brenda's twin sister, come up from Nassau and pose as his wife. That's how all the pictures appeared in the papers. And it was Nella who just walked in on you and got a confession. And how did Fred know you were the one? Well, there were several suspects. But you, Gloria, made the mistake of phoning for Brenda too many times. And the police traced your calls. <laughs> too bad, Gloria. Jealousy is a terrible thing. <laughs> CBS has presented The Whistler. Original music for this production is composed and conducted by Wilbur Hatch. The Whistler is written and directed by J. Donald Wilson and originates from Columbia Square in Hollywood. Next week, Sunday at 9.15... I, the Whistler, will return to tell you the strange story out of the fog. <laughs> Good night. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. That concludes today's episode.
We'd like to thank you and remind you to donate at choiceclassicradio.com. Remember, your donations make episodes like this possible.